don't miss any content, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Oh, please go, please. Please go. <laughs> guys, welcome back to Sahara Football. It's Friday and La Liga is back. There you saw Kevin Prince Boateng in training with Besiktas. An amazing goal that he scored in training yesterday. Many people were praising him on social media yesterday. And he feels he is back and ready for the upcoming season. That is the resumption of the season that was broken because of the COVID-19 pandemic. He has signed a permanent deal with Beshek Tas as well. I'll be giving you details into this story. Today we're going to talk about Emmanuel Ajman Bedou also. If you follow this channel, you remember a couple of weeks ago, that was last year, I think last year August, I brought you a story in which Emmanuel Ajman Bedou was diagnosed of having a clot in his lungs. He narrates the story of how that clot happened and how it was detected by the medical staff at Hellas Verona. In December of that same year, I brought you a story of him coming back as a substitute for a game in the Italian Serie A after being out for close to six months. An amazing story you hear from the man himself, Emmanuel Acheman Bedu. Also, we'll talk about Thomas Tepati's father. He has given the latest on his son's choice where he wants to eventually play in the next season and I'll be giving you more updates on that front as well. Sige Akono says the Ghana Black Stars captainship will be rotated. Hmm, this will be interesting. I'll be giving you updates on that as well as usual. If you are new to the channel, I advise you to subscribe to the channel and to click on the notification bell to get more updates. So La Liga has resumed. Yesterday it resumed. We already know German Bundesliga has resumed. And the English Premier League, as well as the Italian Serie A, will follow suit in the coming weeks. Now, to the speaking of the Italian Serie A, a Ghanaian player, Emmanuel Ajeman Bedu, who plays for Hellas Verona in the Italian Serie A, last year he suffered something that was life threatening. It was detected that there was a clot in his lungs and it was necessary for him to stop playing football for at least six months. He narrates the story of how clot was detected in his lungs and how fortunate he is to have had it detected at an early stage. Let's have a listen to Emmanuel Achiman Bedu as he narrates his story to City TV. Unfortunately, after our last friendly game, and a week before we start the league, uh, we played a friendly game against Skull. So when I came home, I was feeling a bit tired. And in the morning, we went for recovery. I came back home. When I started brief briefing, then I felt very tired. Then I called our doctor in the afternoon, and he said, maybe it's the game, or maybe I have a knock, so I should just have a painkiller and just sleep. So tomorrow morning, you will see what will happen. So I took the painkiller, I slept. I went back training the following day. I came back and still feeling that pain. <laughs> and I was alone here. And so around like... 1 a.m. in the night, it became very dangerous, right? When I breathed, like, I felt all my lungs, lungs are blocked. Wow. So I, I, I picked my phone and called the doctor. Thank God, unfortunately for me, he was awake. Wow. So he, he, was, he was living a bit far from me, and one of our physiotherapists, live like 10 minutes from me so he called the physio and he was awake at that time as well so he rushed to my house when he came and he saw my face he said no you need to call frontos or Corso. no i'm speaking italian sorry uh, <laughs> that's the okay. hospital the, uh, yeah the hospital people to come for me so he called them and they came i went there they did a checks they gave me water rest a bit did the checks they say maybe it's, it's a knob, but they can't see anything. And you know, it was just like MRI, it's normal test like this. Yeah. So I came back, I thought I was okay. I risked my, I risked my life as well, went to training. But when we start training, you know, I, like, I start breathing very fast. Then the coach saw that, no, this is not the baby I know. I think the guy is suffering. So he spoke to the doctor and I told the doctor that, no, you know me. I'm, I'm a warrior, I'm a fighter, but... 
I can't, I can't, I can't do it anymore. So we need to do a lot of checkups. Then I call my agent. My agent call you, Denise, doctor. You know, I'm alone here, so obviously they need to collaborate and communicate. Yeah. So the doctor here communicated with you, Denise, doctor, and they, they they found out that no, I need an intense checkup as well. So we went to another hospital. They did an intense checkup, and they saw that there is a blood in my clot. That's why I'm, I'm having problems to breathe. So the doctor even asked him. So I used this to train for like three or four days before coming to the hospital. And I must, I must appreciate God because it was a very wow. risky and dicey situation. That's so a, they saw it and yeah. they came back and they said, I need to be out for three or four months. And that was in August. So from August to December, I was out, like not even to run, not to walk. I need to stay at home. So it like like COVID nineteen, I have COVID nineteen twice. Wow. One is like four months to be at home, <laughs> and this one is like a different. So, bro, uh, that that's is uh, unbelievable. I, think I mean, yes, I, I have my life. I'm yeah. I'm I'm stunned. I'm, I mean, I'm absolutely stunned because in in one year, you probably have had two pandemics. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's not. It sounds funny, but it's not two funny. Two pandemic. I run one tragedy about my sister. Yes. So like three serious. That's the situation. So he heard Emmanuel Ajiman Bedu there on how his clot was detected by the medical staff at Hellas Verona and with Denise, there correspondence there between the two camps and he was really a lucky bunny. With COVID-19 also hitting hard in Italy, he has to say he is grateful that he still has his life intact and that nothing really fatal happened to him. The blood clot was detected successfully and he has been treated. He's back in action for Alas Verona, eased into action, I have to say. He's being eased back into action. And Hellas Verona have the Ghanaian player Emmanuel Ajimabidu, who won the World Cup at the under 20 level in Egypt for the Ghana under 20 side captain by Andre Ayu. And we are happy that he is back in tip top shape. I move on to my next story. It has to do with the Ghana Black Stars captaincy issue. As you can remember on this channel on Sunday, I brought you a story in which I talked about the Ghana Black Stars captaincy issue being the cause of us missing out on a lot of trophies in the past. And it has been something that has been a big bother to the boys in the camp. Now, last year, we all know what happened in the AFCON 2019. Siki Akono says that this is because of sometimes poor management or they're part of the management committee of the Ghana Blacks and communication to the players. He says he is likely to rotate the captaincy. To be fair, the captaincy cannot belong to one person in particular. The captain is a representative to the, to the team and it should be a privilege, not something that someone should feel is their right or they are entitled to. And Sigi Akono says probably he has to rotate the captaincy. Now it says here that the Ghana Black Stars coach Sigi Akono is considering rotating the captaincy of the Black Stars in the wake of controversies over this role. Over the role. Now Swansea's Andre Ayu is currently Ghana's captain after taking over from a Samoa Chan ahead of the African Cup of Nations in Egypt. Now, Jan, who was unhappy with the decision, announced his retirement from international duty and was called back by the president, Nana Andudankwa Akufuadu. Brazil is arguably the biggest national side to have rotated its armband in recent times. Now, this is what he said. Sometimes the captaincy issue comes as a result of poor communication from management members or certain people trying to push their own agenda. Looking at our current situation, I will propose we rotate the captain's armband and also a general captain appointed to speak on behalf of the players. Brazil and other countries have made it work, so we can also emulate them. We should be careful or else the captaincy role can affect the national team for years to come. And CK Akono, that is what he thinks will help the Ghana Black Stars. Rotating the captaincy. Hmm. Rotating the captaincy. Do you think rotating the captaincy is the answer we are looking for? Um, he's looking to rotate it because of how Brazil and some other countries have done it in the past. I hope the players are open-minded enough to understand this rotation of the captaincy. And to be fair, no one is entitled to be captain of the Black Stars. It is a privilege to be named captain of the Black Stars and it is a privilege to lead your country in a tournament. It is not 
a right and CK Akono is looking to remove that from the captaincy issues that have curtailed our progress in so many tournaments across the globe and he says rotating it is the way he is going to go about it let me know your thoughts you think CK Akono rotating the captaincy is a good way to curb the issues we've had with captaincy issues in the past I move on to my next story it has to do with Thomas Teipati's father he says his son will join any club that meets his buyout clause yeah there we go again Thomas Party's transfer another twist in the tail I'm even tired of hearing so many stories his father has spoken and said he would join a club that offers the highest money I think he's reiterating that here by saying that Thomas Party will join a club that can't pay his release clause now this means that any club which shows interest in signing him must meet those demands so any team which meets Atletico Madrid's demands will be able to sign my son and not specifically Arsenal hmm. I always call my son and he is of age to decide on a move I am ready to support his decision earlier this season Pate Senior claimed the Gunners were locked in negotiations over a fee now the Gunners have not yet signed a Ghanaian and I brought you a story here saying that Champions League football could be the only way they could sign the Ghanaian player Thomas Tepati. So it's looking more and more likely that Party will join Arsenal if they meet or if they are able to qualify for the UEFA Champions League. So that is it there on the front of Thomas Party. I move on to my final story, Prince Boating. I you know if you follow this channel, I brought you a story on Kevin Prince Boating and his move to Besiktas probably not becoming permanent. Thankfully, it's now possible that he will join Besiktas on a permanent deal after the club decided to sign him now he moved from Fiorentina after his spell with FC Barcelona on loan from Sassuolo fell through and he was ready to take on another venture he moved to Fiorentina and in the winter he moved to Besiktas which he said is his second home now Kevin Prince Boateng has been trying to secure a permanent move COVID-19 happened and there are clauses that were in a contract that would make it possible for Besiktas to sign him on a permanent contract were not met. It seems they have come to a compromise this time around. Ghanaian international Kevin Prince Boateng has received a 1.7 million euro contract extension offer from Besiktas following the management decision by the Turkish club. A report by Fanitech.com, the FR indicates a 33-year-old will have a stay at Turkey after a discussion with Besiktas to know fate as his loan deal comes to an end. Now Boateng joined Besiktas in January 2020. It was learned that Besiktas management informed the player who asked about his status in the club that they had plans of 1 million euro of contract after a meeting. He has had a great performance this season until COVID-19 hit and he is back and he is ready to go for Besiktas. So that has been it for today on the Friday edition of the latest in and around the world of football. La Liga is back. Sevilla beat Real Betis yesterday night and continues tonight. More games to follow. English Premier League 17th of June Manchester City versus Arsenal. Get ready for that. And Bundesliga will continue this weekend along with La Liga and Serie A as well. We are all looking forward to it. We hope everything moves on smoothly. We hope there are no more cases of COVID-19 recorded and we hope everything is, is beautiful in the end. I've been your host the last few Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out our merch links in the description. Also, let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments box. Beshikta signed Kevin Prince Watting permanently. Emmanuel Ajiman Bedu's story on how plot in the lines was detected and also Iki Akono's decision to rotate the Ghana Black Stars captaincy. Your thoughts are welcome in the comments box. I'll see you guys in the next one. Enjoy your weekend.